Welcome everyone to our webinar, Becoming an Approved Employer within the Palm Scheme. Thank you everyone for joining today. My name is Kaku and I'm an immigration lawyer. And I'm joined today by Yun Chu, the practice leader for Legal Vision's corporate immigration team. So before we begin, just a couple of housekeeping um, items. So you will receive a recording of, of the slides and of this presentation via email. You can submit um, your questions via the chat box anytime throughout the presentation. We'll actually cover those at the end of this webinar. And last but not least, please do complete a feedback um, survey after the webinar has finalized. This would really help us um, manage upcoming presentations. We would really appreciate it. Um, so moving on to the next slide, you, you can actually um, claim a complimentary consultation with Legal Vision. Um, so if you can provide us your contact details in the survey at the end of this webinar, we'll be in touch with you. So this offer is available for the next 48 hours and we can actually discuss, um, you know, uh, your palm eligibility to join the scheme. Uh, maybe you have other types of corporate immigration uh, questions that we can assist you with. So um, today we'll be discussing, obviously, the palm scheme. Um, our focus in today's presentation is providing you with a, a broad introduction to what the scheme is about. How can you join it? How can you become eligible? And all the steps involved from start to finish to actually having Palm workers working for your business in Australia. And you can see steps one to five. And we'll actually provide you with a questions and answers session towards the end of this webinar. And without further ado, um, let's let's start discussing the, the Palm Scheme. Um, so first of all, what is the Palm Scheme? Um, Palm stands for Pacific Australia Labour Mobility and is one of Australia's temporary migration programs to address unskilled, low-skilled and semi-skilled workforce shortages, uh, mostly its focus is for rural and regional Australia, but other regions can be accessed depending on the industry. So the focus of the Palm Scheme is to, um, to build strong partnership between Australia and the nine uh, Pacific Island nations and Timor-Leste, which are um, the countries that are currently participating in the Palm Scheme and more soon to come. Through this scheme, eligible business can recruit workers for either the short-term or the long-term cohorts. Short-term, you can sponsor workers anywhere from up to nine months. And for the long-term cohort, you can sponsor workers um, anywhere from one to four years. Um, now, it's important to know that each cohort will have different recruitment requirements in terms of the business obligations and um, you know, different uh, criteria apply to, to your expectations as, a, as an approved sponsor, specifically in terms of accommodation, guaranteed hours of work, employment type, deductions, and the type of wealth, well-being and welfare support you have to provide workers. So that's important to take into account. Um, so this scheme helps fill labor shortages, as we stated, primarily in rural and regional areas. Um, but you can access um, other regions for, for other industries. And it's a really good scheme to actually tap into, you know, reliable, productive workers. Um, this scheme actually allows you to access industries that are not available via the standard pathway, such as the standard business sponsor, 482, TSS and 494 regional work visas. So that's that's one of the main benefits. Um, who are the key players? Well, basically, it's, um, as we well know, the Department of Home Affairs, obviously, um, as you see, the acronym DOHA is in charge of any immigration related aspects, primarily the Palm 403 visa. But we also have other key important plays that you may have not come across in terms of immigration as of yet. So we have the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, DFAT, the Department of Employment and Workplace Relations, DUR, and um, who works in partnership with the Pacific Labor Facility, PLF. All of these three players will, um, will be actually key um, 
um, in terms of assessing your eligibility to, to access the PALM scheme and manage the recruitment process, your relationship with these nine Pacific nations and Timor-Leste. So it's really important to understand. All of these Pacific um, nations and Timor-Leste countries actually refer to as labor sending units, LSUs, within the scheme. Um, as you can see here in the, on the screen, we provided just a, a brief outline of the current participating countries, and again, more to come in the near future. So we're gonna move ahead and discuss the, the overall process of the, of the PALM scheme. As you can see, we have outlined five steps involved. Um, step one, approved employer. Um, the business basically applies for this um, um, to the PLF, and it's going to be assessed in conjunction with DFAT and DUOR. Uh, step number two, obviously, the temporary activity sponsorship, and you actually apply um, for this to the Department of Home Affairs, and it's assessed by both Doha and DFAT. Step number three, four and five are the steps that you need to actually bring workers from one of these palm participating countries. And step one and two are the steps that are necessary to actually access and tap into the palm scheme. Um, so we're now going to be focusing on step number one, um, how to apply and become a PALM approved employer. We can see here the eligibility criteria. So this first step is very important and um, I'll actually hand it over to my colleague Yin to discuss the eligibility criteria in detail. Thanks Kaku. Um, so as Kaku has mentioned, the first step in this process is to apply to become an improved employer with the PLS, which is the Pacific Labor Facility, sorry, the PLF. And there is a number of eligibility criteria initially that you need to meet. So you need to ensure that your business is located in one of the, uh, one of the areas um, that is specified. So there will be a list of postcodes that will outline in the following slides. Now they can be specific postcodes in all states, but that's one of the key criteria. You need to operate in one of the key industries. And again, we will discuss that in the following slides as well. Uh, quite importantly, you, you do need to be an established legal entity, but it, you have to be an established type of legal entity as well. So if you are a sole trader or partnership or unincorporated uh, entity, that is not an eligible legal entity for the purposes of making an application for an employee to become an approved employer. So you typically would need to be a private, private company um, or an incorporated legal entity as well. There are a number of compliance checks that may occur through the assessment of the approved employer application. So what the Doha and Dua and the relevant government agencies are interested in understanding is if the business has been compliant with relevant uh, immigration laws, employment laws, and any other regulatory framework that's applicable to your business and your industry as well. Um, so they could actually uh, work with other government agencies or access information from other government agencies to conduct those compliance checks. Um, so, for instance, if you're a labour hire company and you have uh, a licence to on hire in that particular state, there will be a framework and there will be a regulatory body that will be monitoring your compliance with uh, uh, your obligations in holding that licence. So, it really depends on the type of business, what other uh, checks and compliance monitoring will be conducted. And we can certainly advise around that, uh, obviously based on the business. Now, if you're, there is two types of employers that could apply for the approved employer application. One is the direct employer. So this is where it's your business that will be directly employing the Palm Scheme worker. And um, 
And with that, that business will be required to demonstrate at least three years of financial viability. Now, if you're a labour hire company, then there are additional requirements um, that would be applicable to a labour hire business, such as demonstrating at least five years of continuous operation and financial viability. Um, and obviously, demonstrating that the labour hire business holds the relevant labour hire licence in the state that it tends to undertake those on hire practices as well. So if we can move on to the next slide, uh, we're going to now discuss specifically, um, well, this is, a, this is a slide about the postcodes. So the types of locations that whether you're a direct employer or labour hire business would need to operate in. And I won't spell out those postcodes for you because obviously that's quite clear from the slides. And don't forget, you do get a copy of these slides as well. And as you can see, there are specific postcodes and there'll be some states or territories where um, it doesn't matter where you are, um, as long as you're in that state or territory, then, then you, you can access uh, the PALM scheme, provided that you also operate in the relevant industry as well. So if we can move on to the, the next slide, um, which discusses or outlines what are the eligible industries. So there are a number of eligible industries. And again, I won't um, read out every single one of them for you, but what's important to note is that most of these industries require that the business operate in one of those relevant areas, but there will be some exceptions as well, uh, namely in agriculture and agriculture related food product manufacturing, where the business can actually operate in any part of Australia. So there is a bit more of a relaxation there. And this is by no means an exhaustive list because there are always um, ongoing consultations with the relevant government agency around whether there'll be introductions of new industries. Um, so at the moment, this is the, the established industries or the recognised industries in place. So we can move on to the next slide. So having understand that, understanding what the industries are, what the relevant location is, well, how do you go about um, actually meeting the criteria for the approved employee application and what are typically the processing timeframes? Um, so in your application, you should be providing very detailed position descriptions. And because a lot of these occupations that you will be wanting to access a low skilled, semi-skilled or um, what we can sit or what is classified as ANSCO skill level four to five. Um, at times businesses may not have a very detailed position description. So it's really important that you, for the purposes of this process, you actually elaborate and um, discuss in detail what that position that you're wanting to nominate entails. Um, so this could be one position, this could be several positions, um, whatever it is, you need to provide quite a bit of information around what that involves. Uh, there needs to be ample documentation and information around the business's policies and business practices and procedures. So things around, well, how will they employ the Palm Scheme workers? Uh, what, um, what policies are in place, such as work health and safety uh, issues, uh, you, you know, entitlements to benefits? Um, what is the situation in regards to uh, their employment in certain locations? So if particularly if they're a labor hire company, and the actual work will be performed in a location that is distinct from the labour hire business, what those policies and procedures would be in place to ensure that those workers are kept safe um, and that their entitlements remain intact as well. So this could vary from business to business, from industry to industry, and part of the assessment and advice process that Legal Vision conducts is identifying what those um, 
policies and procedures are within a specific business and being able to clearly elaborate and describe them to the satisfaction of the relevant government agency for the purposes of this application. Another um, consideration is how the business has um, engaged in consultation with other external stakeholders within the community. So this could be around working with other uh, support or community organisations that will be able to assist these palm workers to integrate and assimilate into the Australian culture and society, um, whether that be uh, giving them information or acts or uh, allowing them to understand what other benefits or entitlements or access to support that they would have during their tenure in Australia and, and working for you as well. Um, as an improved employee, if you are successful in becoming an improved employee, you are responsible for ensuring that the palm workers have adequate and appropriate accommodation. And as part of the application, you need to provide very detailed information as to how you are going to provide that accommodation. So what the accommodation would be, how they, whether that accommodation is fit for purpose, whether it has the appropriate living facilities, what checks that you have done to assess that um, in terms of whether there's any agreements that have been in place with certain housing organisations or private uh, real estate agents, those sorts of things will also vary from uh, business to business because some businesses maybe they have um, established their own accommodation that's on site, uh, particularly if it's a um, agriculture or farm or remote working facility, maybe they already have that in place so you need to provide things like pictures and information around what that includes but others you may have to actually engage with external providers to offer that accommodation to your palm workers. So even though there's no application fee associated with this step, uh, processing timeframes do vary because there are a number of checks that are conducted by various government agencies, such as the ATO, the Pacific Labor Facility, DFAT and DUA as well. So the actual process to assess an application to become an improved employer um, can take a considerable period of time. Approximately, we find it takes three months, but please don't hold us to that because uh, every case is different. And in terms of um, how the government agency conducts those checks will vary as well. Um, so it's really important that you plan appropriately, that you allow ample time uh, for this process to take place, particularly steps one and two, because there are no indicative timeframes. And if you're looking at mobilising a workforce within a certain timeframe, you may not be able to do it. So leave a lot of time to um, undertake steps one and two. Unfortunately, if the application is refused, then there is an opportunity for your business to apply for it again, uh, once more within 12 months, okay? And then once approved, the relevant government agencies such as, as, such as DFAT and PLF will monitor your continued compliance um, with being a palm uh, approved employer. So then that brings us to the second step, which is uh, lodging or preparing and lodging the temporary activity sponsorship, provided that you meet the eligibility criteria. And essentially, you can actually do this in conjunction with submitting an application for an improved employer. However, it, it won't actually be assessed until the business is um, provisionally approved as an employer under the PALM scheme. Uh, again, unfortunately, there's no indicative processing times around how long it will take to actually assess and process the temporary activity sponsorship application. So it, it's very important that you leave considerable amount of time for this. Um, and some may ask, well, what is the appropriate time frame? Um, we, I believe we have a question around that, so we're going to answer that in a moment as well. But the 
criteria that you need to meet is that you're an Australian organisation that's lawfully established and operating, obviously, in Australia. And as we had previously discussed, there are some types of legal entities or business structures that would not be eligible for this uh, scheme, such as sole traders and unincorporated uh, legal entities as well. It's really important that there's no adverse information known about a the business and adverse information is a, a bit of a, a broad interpretation, but essentially, as what we discussed in step one, if there's been consistent compliance with employment laws, immigration laws, any kind of regulatory framework that applies to your business and pertains to your specific industry, then there, then there typically shouldn't be any adverse information known about the business as well. Uh, obviously, there are some government fees associated with lodging the temporary activity sponsorship and then once it is uh, processed and approved, it is approved for a period of five years. Um, so it is important to know, and this is what my colleague Kaku will delve into in the next slide, is that steps one and two need to be uh, approved um, or completed before um, the palm deed can be executed. And this is the next steps where the business will need to submit a labour market testing application and start mobilising the workforce. So now I'll hand that back to Kaku to explain steps three to five. Fantastic, thank you very much, Ian. Um, so once the business has lodged that approved employer application, it has been provisionally granted. The step two, the, the task, temporary activity sponsorship application has been approved, then obviously the deed, the palm deed has to be executed by, by all parties. And that's when the business will have access to, to, to a special platform called Palmis, which is very similar. Um, the idea of it is very similar to any account. And this, once you have access to this online portal, that's when you can actually commence a recruitment application. This is step number three. Recruitment application is very important because this is the step that the business is indicating how many numbers of workers is trying to bring from which palm participating country, which specific roles, what is the skill level, what are the tasks and duties of these roles, where are the workers going to be located, are you a direct employer or are you a labor hire employer? Um, you know, which, which again, which roles, which farms, um, the accommodation type, the addresses, um, all, all, of, all of these questions will, will have to be answered fully by you in this recruitment application, which is seen by the list of the eligibility criteria that you see on the screen. Um, Additionally, you have to conduct labor market testing for 14 days. Um, and again, the labor market testing is a publication of the job ad and you have to do that per each role. So if you like to, for example, um, bring palm workers and sponsor them to be farm workers, or, you know, farm pickers, but you also have, uh, you know, butchers or meat processing workers. You have to do a labor market testing for each one of those roles. You have to indicate how you're going to take care of the workers. Um, that's the welfare and well-being plan. How are you competent to deal with, um, you know, the workers' unique cultures requirements, such as religion, community groups. Um, again, the accommodation must meet the minimum accommodation requirements mentioned by my colleague Yin. Um, what is the transport looking like? How are you going to bring workers from the airport to the accommodation and from the accommodation to work every single day? Do you have a contingency plan on what can happen if things go wrong? Um, let's say something happens with one specific farm and you're a labor hire worker, uh, employer. Um, do you have other clients that you can send them to? Things like that. Um, obviously, you have to prepare a draft offer of employment, which is uh, akin to an employment agreement, showing that 
um, you have explained or you, that you will explain all of these points to each worker before they sign this. And last but not least, that pay parity and net financial benefit, which is the key aspect of the Palm Scheme. You have to show that workers will benefit financially and that they will be able to send uh, money back to their families in these palm participating countries. You know, talking about uh, at a high level, the key considerations and the processing and timeframes of this step, um, we, we, we talked a, a bit about this, but I think the main criteria is familiarize yourself with the eligibility criteria, understand your obligations, the eligible deductions, and what are your expectations as an approved employer to participate in this scheme? Because the obligations are quite onerous, they're quite stringent. So um, our advice is be fully aware of all of these things before you decide to, uh, you know, to take part into the pump scheme and bring workers. Um, in terms of process and timeframes, it's, it's very hard to, um, to advise on this, but for this particular step, the recruitment application, our advice is um, plan 10, 12 weeks if better. The minimum is eight weeks, but 10 weeks ahead of time, meaning ahead of when you expect palm workers to enter the country, plan 10 weeks in advance for all of this to be completed because it does take time. Obviously, you will be liaising with labor sending units to actually um, communicate your needs and tell them these are the workers that we need in these positions. And they will actually assist you with the recruitment stage and selecting candidates and arranging interviews. So all of this is done as well. You will receive ample support by um, the Pacific Labor Facility and by the labor sending units as a newly approved Palm employer to understand all of this process as well. Um, so moving ahead to steps four and five, um, once all of it has been completed, the recruitment application has been approved, you have selected the workers you would like to bring, then obviously the last, uh, one of the last steps is to lodge the visa application. Again, you will receive assistance from the labor sending units in terms of um, asking and compiling all of the documents, but it's actually your obligation to lodge this visa in any account. Um, and obviously, doing this requires knowledge and requires expertise, even though the labor sending units, the Palm Pacific participating countries are helping you, um, you know, it would be advisable to receive legal assistance and advice in terms of, you know, do the candidates meet the eligibility criteria that you see on the left of the screen? Um, do we foresee any issues? Obviously, all of these things may cause delays, so you want to prepare the best um, application possible um, just to um, you know promote this sort of expedition and, and, and expedite the process for these type of applications. And again, um, processing times may vary, but the Department of Home Affairs suggests that they will try to prioritize this within 16 days. You can see the fees um, on the right side of the screen, it's $335 um, plus credit card surcharge. And obviously, any other fees that are associated with health, police check, translations, and you know, third party documents. Um, so if we move on to the next slide, the last step is the mobilization. Um, and this is really, you know, everything has been completed. We just need to bring the workers from the Palm participating country to Australia. It's roughly and fairly straightforward. Um, the main criteria that I would like to point out is we obviously do not advise purchasing any flights until the visa has been um, granted. And for mobilization, you have to provide the, the flight details to the labor sending unit at least five days before the uh, workers are scheduled to travel. And this is because they are required to meet with the workers and conduct that pre-departure mobilization training just to explain what Australia is about the culture, the, the rules, the laws, what are they expected to do within the community in, in Australia. And then once they arrive in Australia, again, you should meet with the workers to conduct a bit more of training on what is the first day of work, where are they staying? You have to conduct training and support in terms of opening a bank account, obtaining a TFN, things like that, just to ensure that you know um, they're set up for success, basically. So um, 
that concludes really the main part of our webinar today. Um, you can download, as you can see on the screen, um, our employer's guide to sponsoring foreign workers. Just um, scan the QR code, and um, it's a fabulous um, guide and publication that that explains um, the standard ways of, of sponsoring workers through the standard business sponsorship, 482, 494 visas. So um, we definitely suggest you, you, you check this publication out. Um, and then we, we also do have an upcoming webinar event that may also be of interest to you. You can register now on the link provided there on the slide. And um, my colleague Ian will now talk about our membership. So please um, in, include or submit any questions that you have in the chat because we'll have time to answer some questions and we definitely have received some so far. Um, but in relation to while you're doing that, I just want to tell you a bit about uh, becoming a Legal Vision member and what that entails. So as a Legal Vision member, if you decide to register with us and subscribe to our services, then you're typically um, accessing um, over 100 experienced lawyers at Legal Visions all across varying practice areas such as uh, commercial contracts, employment, franchising, trademarks, immigration um, and disputes as well. And uh, part of your membership will include unlimited document drafting and review, unlimited advice consultations with any member of the legal team, which you will be able to uh, book in a time through a uh, specific portal that you have access to, unlimited domestic trademark applications. We do guarantee quick turnaround times, typically in relation to commercial contracts. Uh, we, we guarantee at least a five business day turnaround uh, these subscription rates are very affordable and have uh, we have a number of tiers that would be suitable for any size business and based on your specific legal needs as well. So if you're interested in learning more about how to become a Legal Vision member, you're welcome to also book in a time uh, to speak to us around that. And don't forget just a reminder that within 48 hours of uh, reviewing uh, this webinar, you're welcome to also book in a complimentary consultation with us um, around your migration matters. Okay, fantastic. So um, now we'll move on to the questions and answers. Um, we have received quite a few. Um, so the first question is, um, can I hire sponsor trades, uh, men, construction, labor, people via the Palm scheme? Um, so the answer is yes, but subject to a few qualifications. Um, so I think we've established you, you can sponsor Palm workers in unskilled, semi-skilled and low-skilled positions, usually around ANSCO skill levels four to five. Um, now, um, the issue with trade occupations is some of them may require licenses and, and, and you know, special skills that may not fit this definition of unskilled, low-skilled or semi-skilled positions. Um, so an example is forklift driver. Usually you require a forklift license. The issue with this particular occupation, even though it's ANSCO skill level four, is in the recruitment application stage, you cannot advertise a role that requires a license to perform those duties. And so if, if you rely on this particular job advertisement for a forklift driver that requires this type of license, that particular role will not be approved in the recruitment application step three. Um, however, you can um, rely on palm workers and actually upskill them later on down the track. That's one of the main keys and main focuses of this palm scheme. So, for example, you, you could potentially employ just um, um, a warehouse um, sort of assistant or, you know, warehouse all-rounder worker and then 
upscale them and train them to become a forklift driver down the track once they're in Australia. That is allowed. Um, another example could be, for example, scaffolder. You could upscale them and train them to, to become a scaffolder, which is also unschool skill level four. So the, the answer is it's, it's complicated. Um, it just requires a bit more of detailed assessment of which particular trade occupations you're interested in. Um, but definitely there could be a, a, a plethora of different um, occupations that you just need to, to hone in and, and prepare a position description like my colleague Dean has mentioned in the first step to just see what that role really entails. Um, now, the next question is, if the existence of adverse information results in the application being refused, um, will you be advised that this, um, will, will you be advised what was the, the reason um, for it being refused? Um, what, what are your thoughts on this, Yin? And I assume this question is asking for the Palms approved employer, but it could also, um, which is step one, but I think it could yeah. also impact step two, the temporary activity Absol sponsorship. Absolutely, they're, they're both key considerations for steps one and two. Um, essentially, our preference when we advise clients is to understand if there's any adverse information that pertains to the business before they proceed with steps one and two. Uh, so we can adequately uh, provide our strategy advice around whether it is worthwhile for the business to continue with steps one and two in the initial stages or whether it is subject to refusal or failure. Obviously, there is no um, there's no purpose or worthwhile purpose to pursue this pro this palm scheme if that adverse information is so grave that it's going to result in a refusal which would ultimately have resulted in costs and and times on your end as well so it's important that if there is any adverse information that you are aware of that you advise your legal representative first. And even so, there could be a series of checks that we can conduct um, if we're initially engaged to provide advice to, um, to, to, to reveal whether there is such adverse information because we appreciate at times with businesses that that may not be known or something has fallen through the cracks or something's been uh, actioned inadvertently as well. So uh, the, the going back to the specific question, if for whatever reason the adverse information is not identified uh, prior to commencing the process and if the approved improved employee application or even the TAS application is refused, then typically there would be a reason uh, provided as well. And if it is an adverse information, they may actually elaborate on what that adverse information is. Um, however, um, we obviously we advise that it's, it's best to be proactive in that step. That's a fantastic. Thanks for the answer again. Um, we'll move on to uh, our next question. What is a realistic timeline until palm workers arrive in Australia um, from the commencement of an approved employer application? Look, that's a great question. Um, it's, um, it, it varies. Um, and now I think it's important to note that given that you cannot enter into the palm deed, meaning you cannot execute the palm deed contract, um, which is needed to become an official approved employer until the temporary activity sponsorship um, step number two is approved, meaning you have to fully finalize step one and two to then sign the palm deed. All of that, um, there's just no official, uh, you know, guideline on what a timeline may look like. It could take, you know, the minimum three months, it could take five months, it could take seven months. It is, it, it is just not entirely clear. Um, what I will say is our advice is, um, because it's, it's difficult and it's not entirely clear, we usually approach this on a case-by-case -case basis, but um, 
you know, inform employers until you become an approved employer and can actually submit a recruitment application. We do not recommend relying on, on palm workers and, and project, um, you know, for business expansion or completion of farm work uh, until the workers are actually in Australia. As, as unfortunate as that sounds, it's just a lot of, of variables in terms of planning for this. Um, so, so that's 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 all the questions that we have for today, and that's actually all the time that we have for today as well. Um, so after this webinar ends, you will receive a, a feedback um, survey pop up. Uh, we'll really appreciate it if you can provide um, a, an answer to that. Um, so please do include your contact details to receive that complimentary legal consultation within the next 48 hours if you'd like to discuss how we can help you and assist your business with you know joining the palm scheme if is this palm scheme suitable for you or any other corporate immigration needs you may have so um from me and myself thank you all very much for joining today's webinar we'll look forward to speaking with you soon thank you everyone have a wonderful day